We're going to do a Philadelphia Eagles now mailbag where we open up the floor and answer all of your questions heading into the preseason finale against the Indianapolis Colts. I can't believe that the regular season as Philadelphia travels up to Foxborough to take on the Patriots for opening weekend is going to be here before we know it. I'll tell you this, though. I cannot wait. And I can't wait for our last preseason watch party. Hopefully Nick Sirianni decides to play his starters. We're not sure exactly yet what Philadelphia's plan is there, and hopefully we get to see Anthony Richardson as well, the quarterback out of Florida who Shane Steichen is trying to develop into the next superstar at that quarterback spot. The former Eagles offensive coordinator has done wonders in Jalen Hurts' development, Justin Herbert's development. Can he do the same with Anthony Richardson? Our Eagles-Colts watch party will begin Thursday, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. It all gets underway with an hour pregame show, so make sure you subscribe. Most importantly, though, hit that bell icon. Turn on your notifications. Therefore, whenever we push out a video, whenever we do go live, you will be notified. Today's show is sponsored by Kanzuri. You can get 25% off their height-boosting shoes. We're going to put that link in the comment section and in the description of this video. It is Kanzuri.com slash chat, and we'll tell you more about them here in just a bit. Leonard Knight getting us kicked off here. Hey, Chase, love the show. Appreciate you, brother. Who are some players on the roster bubble heading into the last preseason game? Very, very good question. I think that Trey Sermon is a roster bubble player. Dennis Kelly is on the roster bubble. A player in the seventh round like Moro Jomo could be on the roster bubble. He's not going to be able to play, though, because of that concussion. So I wonder, wonder if something happens there where the Eagles agree to some type of, like, Injury settlement, they put him on IR to bring him back if he clears waivers. Joseph Nagata is a player who I think is on the roster bubble. Nicholas Morrow can fit into that category in conversation as well because I think the Eagles actually like Nicobe Dean, Christian Ellis, and Zach Cunningham. The young defensive backs are fringe roster types at this point. Eli Ricks, Mekhi Garner, um, Josiah Scott, you know, players like that are definitely on that roster bubble. Uh, a player like Justin Evans at safety on the roster bubble as well. So as you take a look at this entire roster, some difficult decisions to make. And Greg Ward, one of those players too, who might be deserving of a roster spot as well. And you can say the same thing about Britton Covey as well. Eagles fan Kylie Caperton. Are they playing Mariota on Thursday night or are they playing another QB like Tanner McKee? So... Nick Sirianni, as of this recording on Tuesday, as we're live right now, um, has not said if he's going to play his starters or not. I personally would. I think it's important for them to see at least some game action when some real live bullets are flying just to get acclimated with the speed of the game. The joint practices are one thing. The intensity of a game flow is another. So I hope that Jalen Hurt starts. We see minimal Marcus Mariota and I actually want to see a lot of Tanner McKee again because he's been highly impressive. Don't even play Ian Book. It's just a waste of time. Reed Barkus, one of our real one OGs, going through our entire schedule. What do you think is a realistic record? So Philadelphia last year, number one in the NFC with 14 wins. They tied the Kansas City Chiefs for the most wins in the National Football League. It is very difficult to win 14 games back-to-back -back years while also staying as healthy as the Eagles did last year. They were top four in injury rate, so they're one of the healthiest teams. If they stay healthy, they might be able to duplicate those 14 wins, but I think it's realistically going to more so be 11 or 12 just because the NFL is a league of parity. And when I look at this schedule, it's important and imperative for Philadelphia to start off hot. Patriots, Vikings, Bucks, Commanders, Rams. You really should win all of those games. If you're as legit as the Eagles are after that, Jets, Dolphins, Commanders, Cowboys, Chiefs, Bills, Niners, Cowboys on the road against Seattle. And then you round out Giants, Cardinals, Giants. So that middle portion of the schedule, very, very difficult. And then you have the Giants two times the last three weeks. Now, Philadelphia did have the best record against teams with a winning record last year, but they had their work cut out for them this year. So I'm going to say anywhere between 11 and 12 wins, maybe 13. Who you got? Thursday Night Football, live here on Philadelphia Eagles now. Type PHI for the Birds. Type IND for the Indianapolis Colts during the joint practice on Tuesday. These two teams fought. It was very intense, and maybe it makes due for another intense environment at Lincoln Financial Field in South Philly on Thursday as well. Now, as I mentioned off the rip, get 50% off Kanzuri. 
uh, at Kinsuri.com slash chat for their height-boosting shoes. We'll put that link in the comment section and in the description of this video. If I said 25% off earlier, I meant 15% off. I'm sick right now. I'm trying to do my job. But Kinsuri, have you ever wished that you were a little bit taller to all my homies out there? Maybe you matched on Tinder, but her profile says must be over six feet tall. Maybe your date wants to wear heels, but she can't because it'll make her taller than you. Well, I have the Short Kings covered with today's sponsor, Kinsuri. Kinsuri makes shoes that make you up to 2.8 inches taller without anyone knowing. Look, girls get heels, makeup, push-up bras. Why can't men get a confidence boost as well? Kinsuri shoes, not only height-boosting, but also stylish and comfortable. They're not grandpa's Velcro shoes, but instead fashionable shoes that can receive compliments even without the height increase. The height insoles integrated into the shoes, actually, making it the ultimate height hack and for a limited time only. Our listeners, get an extra 15% off your order at Kinsuri.com slash chat. The site is already 30% off, and with our link, you get an extra 15%. I failed elementary algebra at Temple University. I can tell you, though, that's 45% off your entire order. So support our show. Check them out. C-O-N-Z-U-R-I dot com slash chat. Life's short. You don't have to be. It's time to level up the playing field, fellas. Maybe update that dating profile to six feet. Kinsuri, game changer when it comes to your dating life. And as you can see, athletic wear, dress shoes, all of them very, very comfortable. And you can get hooked up down in the comment section and description of this video. Let's continue to take your questions live here on Philadelphia Eagles now as we have the best subscribers on earth. Jason Music, why not trade Derek Barnett, Rashad Penny, and a third rounder for Taylor? You throw in Edmonds as well. So Derek Barnett, expiring contract. Rashad Penny, expiring contract. Terrell Edmonds, expiring contract. They're all in the final year of their deals, or they sign one-year deals in the case of Rashad Penny and Terrell Edmonds. And a third-round pick might be enticing to Indianapolis, but Jonathan Taylor led the NFL in rushing two years ago, back in 2021. So they're not going to give them away for players who they're probably not going to keep. And frankly, they can get better players back as far as draft capital and or player capital. So Jay said, I just don't think that's realistic. They kind of want that package that the Niners gave up for Christian McCaffrey. Brian Thomas, what's the current status of Matt Areza? Any Eagles front office interested in him? I would be interested in him. Um, he was found not guilty. I think that his defense was able to prove that he was not at the scene of what happened. And it's a interesting legal situation. But as of right now, hasn't been found guilty. And uh, I believe, don't quote me, but I believe, and I know that the sensitivity of a subject matter like this um, can get a little bit tricky, but I believe he's been cleared of all charges. But for Matt Areza, he's definitely better than Aaron Sipa. So if everything checks out, I bring him in in a heartbeat. Predict the score of Thursday's game. We asked you a little bit earlier who you got. How about you get a little bit more specific here and predict the score, Eagles, Colts, coming at you from the link and for our watch party here on Philadelphia Eagles. Now, Kane Angel, if Jason Kelsey retired, who will take the center spot? That's Cam Jurgens. So they literally drafted Cam Jurgens two years ago to replace Jason Kelsey. He was a very good say, uh, center at Nebraska. And you know what's funny, Kane, is that Jason Kelsey assisted Howie Roseman in finding his replacement. He helped them throughout the draft process. And he went up to Howie and said, if you're going to draft my future replacement, it has to be this guy right here in Cam Jurgens. Love the player, and I trust Jason Kelsey's evaluation there. Eagles fan, Kylie, any word on who is starting the game on Thursday night? Uh, no word on who is starting the game on Thursday night yet. If we have that one from Flipping the Bird, 85 there, Chip, we could pop that up as well. Definitely want to get to his question because he's been one of our Super Chat MVPs. It's looking like Sidney Brown is going to start alongside Reed Battleship. I love the nickname of Reed Battleship. Also, that helmet that Flippin' the Bird is posing with, Brian Dawkins' signed helmet that we gave him last year. Um, what's tricky, Flippin' the Bird, is that Sidney Brown, while I love the player, love his range, love his fearlessness, I love his physicality, I've said it all along for months now, the instincts that we're seeing now, something that I've broken down in full detail here on the show, do you want to start a, a rookie? Or do you want to ease him in a little bit? Because Jalen Carter, rookie, could be seeing a lot of time. Sidney Brown, rookie, could be seeing a lot of time. So the only way that the Eagles don't would be because they're not too confident in a rookie playing at safety. 
And sometimes as a safety, things can get nuanced with how opposing offensive coordinators can draw plays up. But I love the future of him, and I think at some point he is going to be a starter and a high-level starter. Brandon Ford, you think Howie didn't, sing a, uh, didn't sign a big-name linebacker because he's leaving cap space for Devontae Smith. So Devontae Smith can't be signed until after 2023. The Eagles will have a deadline to give him a fifth-year option and to exercise that. If they exercise that fifth-year option, he'll play under the same salary for 2024, and then he'll get a little bit of a pay increase in 2025, and in turn, he'll be under contract for two more years, and then you can try to sign him to a contract extension then. So it doesn't have to do with Devontae Smith right now. He's going into year three of what can be a four- or five-year rookie deal, so there's not really a hurry to do that. And when we talked about signing Smitty to that extension uh, back a few weeks ago, we did talk about that. Like They're going to have to start to plan for it because Smith has had record-breaking seasons his first two years in the NFL, and I think that he's a tremendous player. You can't let a homegrown talent like that get away who especially means a lot to the culture as well. So start budgeting right now because he's going to get a bag. Yeah, for sure. Do you think our offense is better or worse than last year? I think better upgraded at running back despite costing less, and Jalen, A.J., Devontae are all going to come out even better. Um, they're going to miss Isaac Sayamalu. We'll see what happens with Cam Jurgens. I don't think they're going to miss miles sanders too much i think that running back and this is kind of my team building philosophy that we see a lot of teams take across the nfl and i've been saying this for a few years now replaceable expendable position where you can find cheap backs via a trade like the eagles did with swift who among all running backs led all backs in yards per touch last year you can find a good running back like kenneth gainwell on day two day three late rounders udfas um, so i think that they can replace miles sanders Isaac Samalo, very good right guard. Jalen can take another step. AJ and Devontae Smith have been unstoppable all training camp. Where I get concerned and why I press pause and why I hesitate to say the offense is going to be better than last year, last year they were great. Uh, last year they set records. Now you have a new offensive coordinator. Could take a little while for them to fully gel. Andrew Nathan, last question to round things off. Who are possible cuts that Philadelphia will bring back to the practice squad. Mm. All right, let me go. Let me give you a surprise cut who the Eagles won't bring back. A surprise cut for where the Eagles have a need and had a need going into the offseason and where I expected this player to contribute but has kind of slipped down the depth chart and when they signed him in free agency, I was like, this guy had double-digit tackles for loss, more than 100 tackles. Can he be that Kaiser White that Philadelphia had last year? I think so. That's Nicholas Morrow. I think that Nicholas Morrow is going to be a surprise cut. If Aaron Sipos doesn't perform well on Thursday night, he could be a surprise cut. As for players they could bring back to the practice squad, um, Joseph Nagata, a player like that, maybe a Tyree Jackson or a Brady Russell at that tight end spot. Um, trying to think of another one. Maybe one of the young DBs, although there are a lot of teams across the NFL who are thin at cornerback. If they cut Eli Ricks, I think he goes somewhere else, but they might try to bring him back onto the practice squad if he does clear waivers. So those are some names that come to mind. Before we hop on out of here, make sure you subscribe. Closing in on 49,000 subscribers. We're less than 500 people away. And if you want real, authentic, consistent, expert analysis on the Eagles that is insightful, informative, and entertaining, this is your go-to spot. Just hit that subscribe button right now.